In this part I'll just give you a um, brief rundown on some of the things you need to look at for rendering. Um, a lot of your stuff, a lot of your tools you'll be using will come from this little drop, these um, icons here. First one I would look at is, it says current environment. So click on that and you've got two choices. You've got a, a texture environment or uh, a daylight environment. So obviously daylight, it's um, all pre-calculated. You've got a little map of the world. Um, wherever you move that, you know, that pretty well sun, sunsets, whatever you want. If you want a particular location in the world, I'm sure there's um, a play where you can actually there's so probably somewhere where you can download the coordinates but that's basically um, that's a this is a really easy one to use I use it quite often the um, <clears throat> how the texture environment works is um, you load in a, a HDR image see how it's got set uh, you've got all these different options RGB color is just basically a straight color yeah, and you can just change the colors there and there but if you want to load a HDR image which I've got here and you can see that's just will light the scene by the the image and if you want to load another one there's a little icon box here I probably, for this tutorial, I just go with the the daylight image. I'll put him um, so there's a bit of some shadow on him like that. That lights him up a bit better. Next thing you want to consider is um, the resolution that you want to render out in. Um, and that's um, this little icon here, the little monitor with the with the arrows on it. So you can you can just type that in yourself, or there's a a lot of presets for um, like uh, I usually when I'm doing YouTube videos, I'll go the um, full high cam HD cam one. And, you, and you'll know, oh, what's happened? Everything's just zoomed out. What it's done, it's just um, resized the whole screen. And if you want to um, zoom back, zoom back out, what you need to do is hold down the control button, like so. Now, um, the easiest way I know is to uh, where are we? Center view and just hold down the control button again. Don't ask me how. Give me a second and I'll figure this out. Alright, I've got it now. It's um, control and left click. Sorry which will drag the whole screen. It's a bit like ZBrush when you're zooming out, but that and once you've let that go then um, navigation wise right right click pans him around and your left click rotates him mouse wheel zooms him in and out. That's That's just the basic navigation for it. Okay, so um, so once you get him into a position, you want to render out uh, you want to render out a picture. Get him to. There's also um, 
these little things down here. These are uh, this will like disable, enable. It's just it's a pick point where your field depth of field focus is. At the moment, it's it's about where I want it. But if you wanted to change it somewhere else, uh, over there. But this this basically picks your camera target and your depth of field. And to get out of that, you just click it again. So what we want to do next is um, uh, render and save this out. So um, there should be like save image. You've, uh, you haven't got a lot of choices here. It's um, PNG basically, 16 bit or 8 bit, or your your toner map EXR um, ones. So we'll just save, um, say, the 16-bit um, PNG. So we'll go to um, the Octane Render. And there's Wompy, uh, no, we'll just put it there. Enter. And that's it. It's basically saved it for you in that, in that format. So we'll just open up our swampy directory again and have a look at how it rendered. So it comes up a lot better when it's um, rendered out in its final version. Quite good really. It does a brilliant job on depth of field. And even the, the bump mapping comes out quite well. As Other options you might want to look at is um, say you want to just uh, save it out with a transparent background. Well, come down to here on the uh, current kernel and right down here there's a little enable alpha, ma um, alpha channel. So you click that and straight away you can see it's, it's cut out the background. So if you render it out now and, and save it again it'll come out with a train as a transparent PNG and that includes the the depth of field blurring on it too so that's a, a pretty handy little one to have as well uh, another thing you might want to look at is um, current imager it's like a, a little levels icon click on it now this is where you do, um, you know, your exposure, all that type of stuff. Uh, always put it back to one. Um, gamma, ISO, um, yeah. The next one down is um, post processes radio. There, this is where um, you have to enable them first before you can um, do anything with it. Uh, this one's probably not a good one to do it with because um, you won't get a, a bloom effect really. Oh well, you do, but it gives you like a glowing type of effect. Back to one. Uh, glare of power. I'm not sure what that does. Yeah, but you just have to play uh, play around with it. Mm. 
Uh, right here. Say you're a, a vendor and want to show your, um, give your uh, um, uh, product a, a, like a, an AO render where it's just plain white and um, just shadows and just basically it shows the geometry. Well, we can do this by. We'll change from our daylight back to our texture environment. Make sure the the RGB color is on. Position our character. And um, under here, there's a, a clay render. So it's very handy for if you just want to do that. And the clay render also it will um, do uh, show up your bump mapping too although I don't think you can see it real well I haven't got the bump particularly high up in this one but it, but it's very handy just for doing that just obviously get in that position save out your image then just rotate around Yep, very. I'm going to use it on this guy in the next day's renders. So, um, what else can I show you? Um, basic animation. Well, that'll. We'll try that next. That'll come into a chapter on its own because there's a couple of methods you can use. So, um, thanks um, for watching, and I hope you got something out of it.